Joining me now is Ibrahim Hamami, who is the director of the London-based Palestinian Affairs Center, and Vehbi Baysan, who is an assistant professor at Ibn Haldun University in Istanbul. Gentlemen, welcome to Straight Talk. It's good to have you here. Vehbi, what kind of a threat Mohammed Dahlan uh, does pose to Turkey to earn him a place on Turkey's most wanted list? Well, probably he's an uh, uh, unusual uh, person to be on that uh, list because, uh, I mean, we know why, but the reason I'm saying is that probably he's the first Palestinian, put it that way. Mm -hmm. This is because his involvement uh, in 2016 uh, attempt. coup attempt, uh, because uh, previously, I mean, in the, the month, four months that leading to that coup attempt, actually, there are a lot of transactions uh, proven transactions mm -hmm. between uh, Dahlan and the FETA terror organizations who staged this uh, uh, attempted coup and, and, and Why luckily... Why it took Turkey three years to put him on the most wanted list? Was Turkey gathering intelligence throughout that time? Well, that too, but also what happened is that an article was published, if you remember, uh, in the U.S. detailing his uh, involvement in that failed coup attempt. Mm -hmm. And uh, Turkey was really furious because uh, it was unexpected. And it's, he's, he's an outside hand, but because of his uh, uh, suspicious dealings with the United Arab Emirates and mm -hmm. what happened in Palestine and all the rest of it, so Turkey kept it for a while uh, quite until studying in detail his uh, 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 firm involvement in it. Okay. Ibrahim, his name seems to pop up every time a government is destabilized in the region. Correct. Tell us about his background. Is he acting alone? Who is he? Yeah, that's a very good question. And people think, is he a superman that every time there's something wrong in any region in, in, in the Middle East, his name pops up. Uh, he has a hand in every area there, which is a hot area. And, I mean, there are reasons why he is like that. He's not a special person, but his, his past has gained him this sort of, sort of not, notorious sort of um, uh, uh, level. I mean, he was recruited very early uh, in the 1980s, and this is according to uh, a guy called y Yaakov Berry, who was a Shabak, the internal um, uh, security, Israeli internal security apparatus. In a book he wrote, he, he says, uh, my, my um, career as an intelligence man, and he said he was, he was actually uh, recruited in the 1980s in Tunisia. Uh, Whitley Brunner, who is a CIA operative, confirmed that. And he, this has been never denied by Dahlan himself, despite being widely reported. Also, they invested very heavily in him when he was in, in the Palestinian territories in Gaza as, as mm -hmm. the head of the um, preventive security. And there were, I mean, like campaigns after campaigns, agreements after agreements. D Dayton is one of Tell them. Tell us about his investors. Are you implying the United States Definitely. or Israel? Is Israel grooming him? Absolutely. I mean, this is, this is a public sort of thing. It's not a secret. Yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah. I have examples here. I mean, there was a Rome, Rome Security Accord. There was uh, the Dayton Agreement. Um, I mean, they channeled uh, millions and millions yes. of dollars to his office in specific. I mean, George Bush, in, in June 2003, after invading Iraq, uh, he did mention, I like this guy, and he gave them a presentation with, with Sharon at the time. So they invested very heavily in him. Okay. They trusted him because he can do anything. He can betray anything. He betrayed Arafat, he betrayed Mahmoud Abbas, he betrayed um, uh, Hamas in Gaza Strip. He, he, he doesn't care. He as far basically as... betrayed his own Palestinians. He yes. filed a legal complaint against Abbas yes. at the International <laughs> Criminal Court, and the complaint was filed by an Israeli lawyer. So does he want to become the <laughs> next Palestinian yeah, president? Hmm. And... I mean, if he becomes the Palestinian president, how will it serve the interests of Palestinians given these uh -huh. circumstances? Well, given, given back to his CV, uh, probably <laughs> it's not going to help much because, look, in April 2002, Israeli Defense Minister Benjamin Ben Elia, he said mm -hmm. that we should give Gaza to Dahlan. Correct. Wow. Imagine. Yeah. So he's that much. And also, International Criminal Court actually uh, opened the court case because of his involvement in Libya and because of the Safe Islam, Safe Islam. Islam. involvement. Yes. Un Islam, unbelievable. Right? They looked at it, yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah they, lo they, they looked at it. But also, <laughs> you know, the corruption charges are like uh, $15 million uh, disappeared and all he, he was, he was He was sentenced to three years' imprisonment in the Palestinian territory. Yeah, in, in his Ramadan, absence. Because of, he stole six, $16 million according to them. But, but more than that, of course, we know, especially uh, the Jewish lobby in the U.S., are very keen to strike a deal for uh, the region. They call it for the region, but of course this is for Israel. Uh, no benefit to Palestinians whatsoever. And Kushner, you remember, uh, yes. is actually 
they very much uh, in, in the region trying to convince the leaders um, to, for this deal to go. But this is, I mean, if, if I'm wrong, correct me, but this is not really to the benefit of Palestinians Absolutely. at all. No. It's yeah. just basically to, you know, what do you want? You want a bit of money, we give you, and then we, t you know, hog the land and then forget about so the rest. What is the purpose? We see him in Libya, we see him in Egypt, we see him in Turkey and Palestine as well. So uh, is he apparently. Um, working against uh, radicals in those regions because we know he is dealing with these foreign mercenaries who assassinate Yemeni politicians, Correct. right? Yeah, I mean, actually, he's a conduit. He's an inst instrument and tool for the UAE. What and is the ultimate goal? Well, it's a regional sort of conflict. UAE is completely against the post-Arab Spring sort of democratic transition, and they're trying to abort that in every region where there were democratic elections or the de democratic process will bring someone who's not in their circles. Mm -hmm. So he's the tool for that. He's the conduit. So if they are funneling money, he's the one who's doing it. Mm -hmm. If they are trying to recruit mercenaries, he's the one doing it. If they are trying to attempt a coup in, in Turkey, for example, he's the one who's arranging it. But again, so, cooperating with another radicals, which you have a yeah, exactly. terror organization. So, it's, so. It, it, <laughs> if you look at it, I mean, in Libya, he's not against the radicals. It's yeah. the opposite. People who actually got rid of the radicals in Sirte, for example, mm -hmm. he's against them. Okay, in Yemen, he's killing, uh, assassinating leaders of the Islah Party, who's not yes. part of the civil war. In, in, in Egypt... But it has links to Muslim Brotherhood, right? Yeah, That's why they're killing them, right? This is, this is one of the reasons. I mean, it's, it's a completely not, not against Islamic Brotherhood. It's against Islamic ideology in general. Mm. So any democratic process that brings a, an Islamist government, well, they're totally against they. it. Okay, regardless of who's coming back, or who's coming up with it. So he's an instrument tool conduit for the UAE, not working. He's like having the backup the support and protection of them. Mm -hmm. They send them all over the place. They send them to attend the Atlantic Treaty Association in Brussels in 2015, in November, to attack Turkey and President Erdogan in, in this meeting. They sent them to meet with President Putin in Russia in, in a, a special security arrangement mm -hmm. to represent the UAE. So that's why he's getting these sort of involvements. So Depi, tell me about it. Dahlan is some sort of a foreign policy tool of the United Arab Emirates, but what is behind this dispute or rather uh, hostilities between Turkey and the United Arab Emirates? What's well, happening? Well, I think Turkey, is, uh, we should uh, explain this from the Turkey's involvement in the region. At the moment, Turkey is kind of a mediator, uh, especially uh, the Palestinian uh, cause uh, concerned. Now, Dahlan, uh, now we have this uh, elections coming up in two months' time. I don't know if this, the time is, uh, uh, date is mm -hmm. set, but let's say in January, February, very time soon. So we have Mahmoud Abbas, we also have Hamas uh, representatives. They are dealing with Turkey, and Turkey, what, I mean, what they want is that they don't want to involve with the elections in Palestine, but they know one thing, Dahlan should not be the next president of uh, Palestine, and I think Turkey will do their best to avoid that. Will that happen? Well, well, I mean, not just Turkey. I think a lot of people in the Arab region, they don't want him to be in any sort of uh, no. position because of his uh, notorious, I would say, crimes mm -hmm. in the region. Uh, definitely the Palestinians don't want him to be there, mm -hmm. and he's trying very hard with the money and with the sort of... Um, a spider uh, web network of, of contacts all over the region to get in, in involved or get uh, as the next PA president or uh, chairman. But well, it will be up to the Palestinian people's will, right? Even if this is the, the, the outcome, that it is clean and the outcome doesn't uh, fit with Israeli uh, goals, they're going to uh, do the same, exactly the same. I mean, kidnap the uh, members of the Legislative Council, um, I mean, stop and freeze all the political life there. So. Either it brings someone they like or they, they stop it. All right, gentlemen, I'm afraid we're out of time. <laughs> no. It was good to talking to you. Thank you for joining me on Straight Talk. Thank you.